you're full time comedian, right? <sighs> With an asterisk, yes. Okay. Because uh, uh, in the day, I am actually mm. a pet rehoming officer. Mm. I, I help people uh, uh, figure out whether they want a cat or a dog. Okay, yeah. interesting. And we're going to talk about that because you have an upcoming event and it's called Doggies. So yeah. I'm actually very curious why Doggies. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that later on. So you want to know about that. So stick with us. Uh, now, uh, you discovering um, you can make people laugh, getting to chat your show. How is it being a stand-up comedian in Kenya especially? It's, uh, it's getting better by the day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it's not where we all want it to be. You know, where we want it to be is uh, you get on stage, you do five minutes of comedy and you get 14 million shillings. Exactly. But we're not there yet. <laughs> you know, baby steps. Uh -huh. we're, we're getting there. But yeah, I think if there is a time to become a stand-up comedian in Kenya, it's actually right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the industry is very young. So if you are, if you are, if you have the heat, if you're funny, you can actually climb the ranks pretty high in mm. a very short time. And okay. uh, yeah. Actually, it can actually work. For most people, uh, you know, with stand-up comedy, we usually uh, associated it with, with Churchill most times because Churchill show was the big thing when it was there. You know, and some people would, would even wonder, you know, what's that Indian guy for, for others who are <laughs> seeing you who have not followed you for a long time? And you're like, you've been doing some things, you're doing great things, uh, you know, and you'll tell us about that. So if someone is going for stand-up comedy, what are some of the areas that are there? What are the platforms that are there? How do you go about that space? Okay, uh, good thing about stand-up comedy you can dive in with one foot still on the outside. Uh -huh. So you can have, you, you, I think for the most part of it, for stand-up comedy to work, you do need to have a second job for now. Mm -hmm. uh, there are comedians who have crossed that boundary where only stand-up comedy can work. Uh, that's where most of us want to be. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you are a budding stand-up comedian, uh, mm -hmm. in Nairobi, it's quite uh, a scene, you know, every, Monday, there are two writing workshops. You know, there's one at Two Grapes in Kilimani, mm -hmm. and there is one at Chemi Chemi restaurant, which is also around the junction there. So there are two workshops happening if you want to learn how to, you know, it's free mm -hmm. for anybody in comedian, you know, get in touch with Punchland Comedy Club Nairobi or Stand Up Collective, you know, and they'll hook you up with these workshops and uh, open mics. You know, a comedian is like, it's like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, practicing comedy, you need to go to an open mic to practice those humor muscles. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, so open mics, quite a few. There is uh, one on Wednesday, again, at uh, Two Grapes. There is one on Thursday at Brioche in uh, uh, Rafta Road. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one happening uh, at Zero Lounge, uh, Zero Twenty Lounge, another one on Thursday. Uh, Friday again at Chemi Chemi restaurant, Saturday again. So, th so the weekdays are open mics and Saturdays are paid shows. Okay. So you can see slowly there is a, a, a slower, I guess, a snowball effect happening mm -hmm. where hopefully comedy can be a full-time job for, for, for really talented people. Okay. For the open mics, for someone like me, uh, who, <laughs> who the, for those that don't know much about it, so it's just uh, an open mic is... Where comedians just come, as long as you, you know, you feel you can entertain people, just come and do your presentation and then go. You come just register. So, so open mics basically uh, are free shows. Mm. So any comedian who wants to perform can ask uh, the, the open mic, uh, you know, the guy who runs the open mic, mm -hmm. if they can get a spot. Spot is, you know, a name on the list when you can go up, do five minutes and then come out. And the audience also knows that it's an open mic, so they also have very, uh, real, uh, you know, because the older comedians are trying new material, uh -huh. you know, and the younger comedians are trying to write material. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of workshopping happening on stage. But good thing is Kenya has a lot of talented people. Mm -hmm. So open mics are really, are even, sometimes even on the same level as paid shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Quite interesting. You've said that, uh, you know, with comedy, it takes practice as well. For others, the thing is just something that just comes natural. Have you ever met someone, or is it uh, something that you can do? You know, you meet someone, they tell you, um, like, do a 
make me laugh. You know? Yeah. Something very ram random. Can you be able to do it? I mean, it's a it's a very weird question. Uh, you know, for, for, so so comedy, I think there there are different types. Mm. There is sketch comedy, which is people acting and it's recorded and it's shown. You know, uh -huh. that is sketch comedy. Then there is stand up comedy, mm -hmm. which is what I do. I stand on a stage and people listen to me. So there's a setting that that requires my jokes to work the way <laughs> they are supposed to work. Uh -huh. And of course, there's also improv comedy. Now, this is where you say people say, I don't Improves. write anything, I can just be off the cuff, which is, yes, mm. a form of comedy. But what I mostly specialize is the stand-up comedy. So whenever people tell me, <laughs> tell me a joke, I'm like, okay, but you, you'll have to sit down and bring like 13 of your friends. <laughs> and I, you'll give me a mic and a stand, you know, I can do an hour. Don't, I'll make you laugh for an hour. Okay. But which is what we're going to do at uh, 21st October, by the way. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's usually, <laughs> but uh, it never works. When people tell me, make me laugh, it never works. It's not the right uh, setting. setting. Yeah. You're not in your environment. You can't make it work that way. But I think you're really natural because, oh. you know, there's a humor. You have Thank humor you. here and there. Thank you. Everywhere. Thank you. All right. Uh, now, what did you do after the Churchill show? Um, what did you do? When did you stop? Uh, okay. When did it end for you in Churchill's show and then how did you continue from there? Well, I guess it was, I didn't just stop. I just uh, couldn't get the time to go. You know, for Churchill's show, you needed at least three days in a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a Tuesday, a Wednesday and a Thursday, something like that. So it's very few jobs where you can have those three days off, mm -hmm. you know, because you had to go to audition and all that so, so when I got a day job to support you know you know my living standards you know I, <laughs> I, I like eating fried chicken you know it costs you to, money you, you know to finance it I need to finance it <laughs> but thank God uh, there were these uh, uh, for the lack of a good word I would say underground comedy clubs like Stand Up Collective and Punchline and also Nairobi Comedy Club who is like the pioneer mm -hmm. I guess of the underground scene and those uh, you know me I just wanted to be a comedian now I knew I wasn't going to be <laughs> maybe a Kevin Hart now. Mm -hmm. So I had my expectations a bit realistic and I knew I had to get better. So maybe being, uh, so this uh, uh, underground comedy club really helped me transition mm -hmm. very smoothly into the kind of comedy that I guess works best for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now you're, st you're involved, you're actively involved in um, Pantline, Nairobi Comedy Club and every other thing. I, I am. A, I always come for the open mics. Uh, I do paid shows. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, mm. that's my level of involvement. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Now, tell us about uh, before we get to other questions. Tell us about the upcoming show that you have. It's a one man show. Yeah. Which yeah. is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. I mean, I guess on Twitter I always see, or I guess it's X now. Mm -hmm. uh, People always, uh, there's always this narrative that there is no Kenyan comedian who could do comedy for an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is some way of my, I'm like, hey, hey guys, uh, maybe you do not know, but not only I, but we have at least six, seven other comedians mm -hmm. who I believe can do, you know, strong comedy for an hour. So this is my, this is my way of showing, you know, everybody, hey, there's a scene here. Please have a look at us, you know, give us the money we need. 14 mm. million, five minutes, come on. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so this show is called Doggies. It's my one man solo comedy show. Although I do have my friends uh, and very strong comedians, mm -hmm. uh, Emmanuel Kisiangani and George Waweru mm -hmm. uh, opening, you know, just helping, uh -huh. uh, you, know, uh, you know, they're just trying to open, make the crowd nice. Set the stage. Set the stage, you know. Uh -huh. uh, and also, I like, you know, as a comedian, I always go for stage time. So if I can give somebody stage time, I always feel nice. Okay. And uh, yes, yeah, Shiko Vaidaka, who is also a comedian, is mm -hmm. helping me direct. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Mutai, he's the other guy. You know, I'm, f I'm the artist, he's everything else. He's the logistics, production, he's the guy who handles that. Uh, Doug Mutai, he's an executive producer. Uh -huh. He's going to be, he's, he runs Stand Up Collective. So he's helping us quite a lot. So, and other people who probably are going to join our team later. Mm -hmm. You know, Ribia is also going to uh, be an executive producer soon. John Ribia, a lawyer, you know. Okay. So every comedian has kind of a day job. I'm, I mean, you've noticed <laughs> so far. Yeah. But yeah, so this show is called Doggies. Because uh, I do have jokes about doggies. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, actually, uh, I just knew about <laughs> your case. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, and also, I guess this is just an inside uh, secret, or I would like to share. Mm -hmm. in the, so in the local, uh, I would say, English stand-up comedy scene, or, the, or I would say the underground stand-up comedy scene, mm -hmm. uh, a dogi is a joke that works most of the time. I would say 99% of the time, <laughs> that joke is a joke that has worked. Okay. Now, I call it dogies because this is a collection of all the jokes that have worked uh -huh. in my career. Ah, so, right. these, are, these are the tried and tested. These are the ones people paid for, but now you get to see them in a theater, which I believe is one of the best ways to watch, uh -huh. uh, to actually even experience. absorb, mm -hmm. experience, thank you, for mm -hmm. the, this kind of comedy. True, okay. So it's going to be at Kenya National Theatre. Uh, sorry, Alliance Francais. Oh, sorry, yeah. It's fine, Allio it's fine. Alliance Francais, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the date? Uh, 21st October, mm -hmm. uh, Alliance Francais. Uh, tickets are available mm -hmm. at my website, amandeep.co.ke. Uh -huh. If you're a Kenyan, you should know how to spell the names of the people of the 44th tribe. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not going to spell my name, you and, should know. And your second name is actually very hard. Jagde, it's Ka phonetic. J Jagde, yeah. but it, how you write it and how you pronounce it, it's very different. I think... It's the D that you're spelling as they. Jagde, even day Jagde. is fine. Okay. Jagde, Jagde. Jagde, yeah. okay. I'm on deep Jagde. Thank you. Ah, there you have it. So it's uh, www. dot. Amandeep. Amandeep.co.ke. -E. -E. You know why? Because uh -huh. I'm a Kenyan citizen. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So many things about <laughs> that. It, yeah. We are the 44th tribe. People forget. Okay. I'm a bit angry. No, no. <laughs> okay. we, we forgive you. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, we want to look at some of the comedies that you have. And also, we have the poster. Just uh, in case it's there, the producer will show us as we enjoy some of his jokes. Coming up, coming up. Broad, he was feeling homesick, so I took him to Alchemist, you know, he was from India. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something about bringing uh, Indians to Kenya, you know. You do not take a raw, undomesticated, untamed Indian and just throw them in Kamkunji, no. You will scare them. <laughs> They're not used to so many, uh, you know. <laughs> Look around, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you have to slowly, you know, just slowly heat it up, you know, make them slowly, uh, how do you say it, acclimatize them. How do you say the word? Acclimatize them, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice. I can uh, acclimatize to that view any day. <laughs> you have to slowly get them used to, you know, to, uh, to being in Africa. You have to learn about the BL to BR ratio, the black to brown ratio. <laughs> and, and you start it at a low, you know, and then you slowly heat it up and then you become, you know, make them comfortable, you know. You don't throw the frog in the hot water. You throw the frog in warm water and then you heat it up, you know? So you take the Muindi to Diamond Plaza. <laughs> and then you take them to Osho Center Parking. <laughs> Sarit Center Food Court. You know? And slowly, Nelby West, you know? South B, Pangani, Mlolongo. This wind is ready for Africa. <laughs> so as with this movie in uh, Alchemist, he looked around, he's like, damn. I did not know Africa had so many Indians. I'm like, you buffoon, you idiot. You think Africa is filled with just African Africans? Africa is uh, this variety. There are different kinds of Africans. They're brown Africans. And if you follow me to Kilimani, I'll show you the brand new, just imported, Chinese Africans. <laughs> oh, these Africans. They own casinos, smoke embassy cigarettes, and instead of eating Ugali, they eat Xiaolongbao. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love these new Chinese Africans. You know, they're so powerful, our, our police has to learn uh, Mandarin. Yeah, that means uh, nobody gets away without giving a bribe. <laughs> you cannot claim language barrier <laughs> as the reason to not pay your kaki to kidogo. No, no, no. Sorry, no one understand. Bro, yellow 50 shillings. So I was watching uh, the news and uh, apparently there's a video of a mother you know, eating her daughter and uh, look, people told me, Aman, don't look at that video. You don't want to see that video, you want to scratch your eyes out, Aman, don't see that video. But you know, I had to, I had to look for the video. If somebody tells me not to do something, I want to do it twice as more, you know. So I googled, uh, mother eating out daughter. I didn't find that video, but the one I found, I, I, I. Oh, I'm not complaining. Those are there. I wish Kenyans made videos like that. There are no videos of people that I can relate to doing things like that. You know. It's, if you look at, if you look for Kenyan porn, most of the titles. I mean, the rest of that video, you should listen to it on your own. And there's a specific time that you should listen to that, according to Amman. <laughs> yeah, this is not uh, a joke not you watch in the morning with your coffee. This is... <laughs> it shouldn't be a joke to no, watch no, no, in the morning. No. Not on morning TV. No, no, no. I mean, you can play it. I have no problem, but... Uh, mm, we did pre listen, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> You can watch the rest of it. You can find it on his YouTube channel, Aman Deep. Uh, uh, God. Jagade. Ja yeah. Just Aman Deep is fine. Aman Deep. Yes, yeah. yes. That's where you can find it. Yeah. All right. So, Aman, uh, we've known about you. Sure. Have you ever gotten, um, like, someone who says, uh, from the jokes, that some are insensitive, yeah. or some are sexist, or stereotyping, yeah. those, and how do you handle it? Those are, those are the reviews I want to put next to my <laughs> poster. Because if you want those kind of jokes, because that's what comedy is supposed to be, a release, you know? Yeah. If, if, you're, if you're always compact, if you're always inside your head with all these funny thoughts, mm -hmm. everybody has these thoughts, but there's nowhere to release them. Comedy shows are the best. That's why, yes, uh, people have told me all that, but it's like getting angry at <laughs> Sylvester Stallone for killing all those people in Rambo. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, this is That's art. This is, this is, th yes, exactly. This is different. Why you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So people just need to know how to, uh, you know, accept it and not take it too seriously because it's a joke. That's what it's meant. I to mean, be. plus comedy is subjective. Sure, it's insensitive to you, but somebody else is having the laugh of their life. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's good thing about comedy. There's a comedian for everybody. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm not the one for you, you but for there's definitely person. one f for you. Okay. And we have the poster here. It'll be posted up on the screen as well. This is how it <laughs> is. We see the dog is there. But there's more to eat from uh, what Aman has said. The best of his jokes that he has told all coming together and, uh, you know, excited about this. Aman, what is your best experience as a stand-up comedian since you started this journey? Uh, I don't think I can oh, no, talk let, about... Let's start with the worst experience first because before we get to the... Well, I can't talk about either the best or the worst. Ah, really? Why? If you're catching my drift. Hmm. Why? Oh, it involves a lot of... Uh, oil uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of second best and second worst, uh, let me start with second worst is usually getting heckled uh, uh -huh. heckling is when you're performing and somebody People. in the audience uh, interrupt and I think th the worst was in Kisumu uh -huh. uh, any of your people from Kisumu a bit energetic you know <laughs> a bit yeah. uh, loud yeah. you know, just yeah. between me and you <laughs> so <laughs> So as I'm performing, somebody insults me in my own mother tongue. And I was very young uh, as a comedian, so I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to play it off in a comic manner. And it really messed up my whole performance. Mm -hmm. But it was a lesson. I had to learn it somehow. And thank you to that random uh, guy in Kisumu. 
for teaching me that lesson. <laughs> and best, I think mo- most of the shows where I have a good show is among the best. It's very hard for me to put them side by side. Uh-huh. Uh, after the show, every time somebody comes and tells me, you know, I loved your show, it's the same feeling all the time. It's the same, you know, yeah. uh, ecstasy of the fee- of, you know, of emotions I get at the same time when mm-hmm. people tell me they love my comedy. Okay. Yeah. What would you say is unique uh, about your comedy? Yes, I wear a turban. Mm-hmm. I am brown. <laughs> okay. uh, I am funny. <laughs> uh, I have a bit of man boobs. You know, the other comedians are a bit, uh-huh. you know, they're a bit sexy. They have a bit of packs. I'm, I'm a bit chubby. Uh-huh. Uh, I have a, I have a weird accent. It's, it's English. It's not English. It's Indian, but it has a little bit of Indian English. Whatever it In- is. Uh-huh. Uh, South B Indian accent. Uh-huh. And things that you really want to hear mm-hmm. yeah okay <laughs> quite interesting yeah. unique yeah. all right what what do you want as we come to a close um final one wh- who do you uh wh- where do you see yourself who do you want to be with to be like is it trevor noah is it um why am i forgetting him you had mentioned him kevin hart kevin hart yeah wh- where do you look um to be okay so my when i was younger my main goal was to be the biggest or the best export of stand up comedy from kenya mm-hmm. and now ne- that is not neither trevor noah or kevin hart so unfortunately that is what mm-hmm. i'll have i'll have to pick up that mantle and be the best uh-huh. export of stand up comedy from kenya okay. so that is what i see myself and wherever that takes me mm-hmm. hopefully is it it is at the levels of uh, uh you know Trevor Noah and all that and yeah i mean of course who wouldn't want to be at those uh, big levels yeah but okay. so that is 14 14 million for 5 minutes right yeah okay not much not much no much people pay more for petrol okay and you cry <laughs> me at least i'll make you laugh interesting you know, good please give me your money <laughs> yeah so okay finally give a give you a shout out for okay. final word this is your camera this is my pitch yes an indian giving a business pitch oh, this yeah. has never Give happened it. before <laughs> please <laughs> why am i begging anyway i have a stand up comedy show coming on the 21st of october at alliance francais uh i've been doing comedy for 7 years uh, so trust the product is going to be good tickets are available at amandeep.co.ke right. gang gang can okay. i can i send a message to my mom yes ਮੰਮੀ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਵਾਪਸ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਦੁੱਧ ਰੱਖਣਾ ਭੁੱਲ ਗਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਬੰਦ ਕਰ ਦਿਓ ਨਹੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਉੱਬਲ ਕੇ ਡੋਲ ਜਾਣਾ ਵਾਓ ਵਾਟ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਯਾ ਜਸਟ ਜਸਟ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਓਕੇ ਯਾ ਯੂ نو ਹਾ ਬਰਥਡੇ ਇਸ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਅਪ ਸੂਨ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਜਸਟ ਵਿਸ਼ ਟੂ ਲਾਈਕ ਅ ਬਰਥਡੇ ਯਾ ਓ ਵਾਓ ਥੈਟਸ ਨਾਈਸ ਹੈਪੀ ਬਰਥਡੇ ਟੂ ਮਮਾ ਅਮਨ ਅਨਮ ਯੈਸ ਅਮਨ ਅਮਨ ਗੋਡ ਵਾਓ ਇਟਸ ਫਾਈਨ ਇਟਸ ਫਾਈਨ Yeah, uh, thank you so much for coming on board and I definitely want to be a part of your show. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with Grasha Mayingi. Stick with us.